and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, and in this video we're continuing our resource gatherer AI. We're going to set up multiple resource types. Let's begin. So we previously made our scene here. We have two gatherers. I can click on either one to select them. And when I have one gatherer selected, I can click on a node to tell them where to mine. The gatherer won't go to that mine, mine it, take it to storage, and so on. If there is a node nearby the one that he was ordered to mine, he automatically search for it, goes there and mines. But when there are no more, he goes and reverts back to idle. Okay, great. So everything is working so far, but the resource type is currently hard coded. Right now we can only support one resource type, which in this case is gold. So let's see what we need to do to support multiple resource types. So let's go into our code. Now in our game resources class, which represents our main resource bank, you can see that gold is hard coded into every variable. This is named gold, 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 and so on. So let's begin by making an enum to handle all of our resource types. So in here, let's make a public enum and let's name it resource type. An enum contains multiple specific values. Now we could define this in here or elsewhere in its own file, for example, but since a resource are part of the game resources, it makes sense to put it in here to keep things nice and organized. So let's begin by making the gold and then let's also have wood. All right, so this enum is what we're going to use to differentiate between the various resource types. Now we could have an int for each resource type like we have for the gold in here, but in order to keep our code adaptable, let's set up the resource amount using a dictionary. So let's make a private static, a dictionary. Now a dictionary contains a key and a value. So for the key, let's use resource type. And for the value, let's use an int. And this will be our resource amount dictionary. All right. Now we need a function to initialize our dictionary. So let's do that now. Let's make a public static void init function. This will be the basic initialization function for our game resources. So in here, let's first make the dictionary. So dictionary equals a new dictionary. All right. And now let's initialize all the keys and set them to zero. So let's cycle through all the keys in the dictionary and set them all to zero. So let's do a for each resource type, resource type in system.enum.getValues of type of resource type. So using get values, we can cycle through all of the valid values of the resource type. So if we add something else in here, it will automatically cycle through it in here. So when we're cycling through it, let's just go to the dictionary and go to the key of our resource type and set it to zero. All right, so now let's remove the old integer since this is no longer needed, but we're going to keep this implementation for now, the gold amount and so on. So in here, instead of increasing the previous integer, we're going to increase the dictionary resource type dot gold. So let's do that and the same thing in here. All right, so as far as the outside world is concerned, everything in this class still works exactly the same. It exposed this function and this function. So everything internal changed, but the outside is still correct. So we can test and make sure that everything still works as previously. With the way we have this set up, we need to make sure that this function is called before anything happens. Now, there are many ways to do that. The simplest one is simply to go to the game handler. And before we do anything, let's simply call the initialization on the game resources class. All right, just like that. Okay, let's test. All right, so here's our scene. Select the various and I can set to go there, set to go there. They are mining, mining, and when they add to the storage, yep, it correctly works exactly the same as previously. Okay, great. So everything is still working, but internally the game resources class is using a dictionary of resource types instead of a hard coded int. Now let's change the functions and the event. So back in our code here, let's modify all of this. If you're using Visual Studio, you can easily rename something by hitting Control R R. This will automatically rename whenever this instance is used. So in here, we want to do on resource amount change rather than just the goal and the same thing in here. So for this function, let's do add resource amount and here get the resource amount. Okay. Again, a quick test, make sure everything works and yep, there you go, it still works. Okay. 
So now in these functions, we need to know the resource type that we want to add. So let's add a parameter for that. So in here, let's receive a resource type, resource type for the amount to add. And on the get resource amount, let's do the same thing. And that resource type is obviously what we're going to use in our dictionary. So now let's find where these functions are referenced. If you're using Visual Studio, you can right click and click on find all references. And here we can see we got a reference in here and now it's red since we have to tell them what it is. So in here we're grabbing resource amount type dot gold and let's go back to the game resources and find the other reference for this one. Here he is on our UI. We have this reference, which will also be using resource type dot gold. All right. So we change the name of our functions, change their signature to support the resource type and modified all the references. So everything should still work. So let's test. Yep, there you go. Everything still works, can select, can tell them and so on. Okay, great. So now everything is still working exactly the same, but we're one step closer to supporting multiple resource types. So now let's go to the gather AI and up here, as you can see, we are also storing an integer for our gold inventory amount. Let's do the same thing we did on the game resource and create a dictionary to hold our resource type. So let's make a private dictionary, dictionary of game resources dot resource type and int. This will be the inventory amount dictionary. So let's instantiate it in here. All right, so we now have our dictionary being instantiated at zero. Now let's make a function for getting the total inventory amount. So let's make a private int get total inventory amount. And in here, we're essentially going to calculate the int total. We'll start off at zero and then return the total. Now in order to calculate the total, we're essentially going to do the same thing we did in here. We're going to cycle through all of the possible resource types and increase the total by what is currently carrying of that type. Okay, great. On our inventory text, let's update with this. So inventory amount, let's store it in here, equals our total inventory amount. And this is what we're going to test. If it is bigger than zero, then that's what we're going to display. Okay. So let's see where else we are using this integer. So let's go down here and we are seeing if it is bigger than three, which really means when the inventory is full. So let's make that function, make a private bowl is inventory full. And in here, we're going to return the get total inventory amount if it is bigger than three. So now go down here and that's the function that we're going to use instead of using the integer. Okay, great. Again, down here, we are using the integer and we grab a resource. And for now, let's keep grabbing just gold resources. But in here, let's go into the inventory amount dictionary of the resource type dot gold. And that's what we're going to increase as previously. Okay. And finally, down here, we need to reset the integer. So let's make another function and we're going to call it drop inventory amount into game resources, which will essentially call this line as well as resetting it back to zero. So let's make that function. So let's go up here onto our inventory code right there. Okay. Let's make a private void, drop them into the game resources, and we're going to copy this line in here. All right. So let's go up there. Okay. Now in here, what we want to do is again, cycle through all of the possible types in our inventory. And first things first, we're going to add the resource amount to the game resources. So in here, the resource type, we're going to add that based on the amount that we're currently carrying. Okay. And after dropping it into the game resources, let's reset the inventory amount back to zero. All right, so let's see if we still have any references to our gold inventory and nope, it's only in here. So we can now remove this and see no errors are left. All right, great. So we have successfully transitioned our gatherer from working with an integer to now working with a dictionary. Now let's test and everything should still be working.
Yep, there you go. I can still control them. Everything still compiles. They still mine, and everything still works. He mines three, drops three, and yep, there you go. Three six. Okay, great. So we now have the game resources supporting multiple resource types. The gatherer is also supported. So the only thing left is the resource node itself. So on the code for the resource node, in here we have the constructor that we receive a transform. So let's receive that transform, but then also receive game resource or resource type of the resource type contained in this node. So let's store it in here. Now on the grab resource, let's return the resource type that has been grabbed. So we're going to return a game resource dot resource type, and we're going to return this node's resource type. Yep, exactly. Okay. Now let's also do a switch for changing the sprite render. So in here, if it is depleted, do a switch on our resource type. Case goal. Then we do the same thing as previously and case wood let's use a different sprite right here okay all right so we now have to modify the gatherer to make sure he grabs the resource type when he calls this function so let's go in here and here when we are grabbing this resource let's put this in a different function so let's go down here and make a private void grab resource from node and in here this function we're going to call from up here after he finishes the mining animation and let's copy this and down here what we're going to do is grab the resource now that will return a game resources dot resource type resource type that's what we've grabbed and that's what we're going to increase in our dictionary all right and after we do, let's also update the inventory text. And that way we can go up here instead of doing all this, we can just call this function when the animation is completed. So this way we can easily do something else. So in here we can make a switch on our resource node dot get resource type. We'll make that function later. And in here, case game resources resource type dot goal then you're going to play the mining animation if it is a wood resource type then play the animation wood chop here is the resource node and here let's do a public you're going to return game resources dot resource type get the resource type and you're simply going to return this resource node resource type okay great so now the one thing missing is in here on our game handler. So in here, let's instantiate a new resource node. In this case, this one is a gold node since it is on the gold node transform. Let's make another one for the tree node transform array. Let's cycle through it and create them using the wood resource type. All right, so we now have almost everything correct. As you can see, the scene is still working. Okay, great. All right, so now let's place a tree on our scene. So let's duplicate the goal node. I'm going to use this tree sprite in here. Okay, great. Let's modify the box collider to be able to click roughly on the tree trunk. All right, like that. Let's go to the game handler and drag the tree onto the tree node transform array. All right. And now let's test and everything should be working with the tree. So let's see. All right, so there he is. He goes there and he starts chopping down the tree. Yep, like that. Great. All right, so the only thing missing is in here. As you can see, he dropped, but the goal didn't update since that was not gold, but rather that was wood. So let's see that. In here on the text on the UI, let's simply add wood underneath. So just some very simple, let's print the wood amount right underneath the gold amount. So let's put in here wood, grab the resources of type wood. All right, very simple and it should be correct. All right, here it is, wood and gold. Okay, great, there's my gatherers. I can click on him and now if I click in there, he goes, he mines, one, two, three. The tree is now depleted, he goes, he drops and yep, as you can see, he dropped wood. Now if I click on this one, tell him to go there and he's going to grab gold. One, two, three, he goes and yep, there you go, gold three, wood three. So there you have it, we added support for multiple resource types. We can now gather wood and gold, but the code is set up in such a way that it would be very easy to add more resource types. 
In the next video, we're going to set up some very simple resource regeneration. As always, you can download the project files and utilities from unitycodemonkey.com. If you have any questions, post them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. Subscribe for more videos and I'll see you next time.